All right. Hey, everybody. Uh, this is Kevin, part of the Libs 201 Cadre. Um, today, I'll be going over the B1 signature assignments. All right. So um, soon, sooner than later, you should have the signature assignment handout in front of you. I'm just going to be going over it to kind of structure my hopefully quick talk of what this project is about. Um, in the signature assignment, we're very much looking at the physical sciences and how physical scientists model um, reality, or we try our best to. And, and in the signature assignment, you and your group will be trying to model reality um, and with specifically what I call a phenomenon of interest. And so this phenomenon of interest is hopefully interesting to you and your group. Um, I've highlighted three examples, wildfires, air pollution, or extreme temperatures um, that you can definitely see um, in this group project. So first off, I wanna go over um, the Purple Era website. We'll be using this website as kind of our home for gathering data and for um, looking into our work, if I can just find it. Oh, here it is. So let's start here. So you'll hit the splash page here and click view the map. And I've been using this already, so it's already kind of in my home location. You can click allow location access if you want to zoom in on your, on your location. And here you'll immediately see a map full of both um, official and citizen science data of current, um, I guess, physical science data in, in the region. And so I just want to go over a few different things here. I cover this also in the handout. Um, but here you have a drop down menu to select different parameters. So the default one is a air quality index of a particular matter, uh, 2.5 micrograms or less. That might not mean anything to you. Just know it's the default air quality index for most cases. You also have a temperature. <laughs> I'm recording this video on a Sunday night. Um, it's a it's actually pretty chilly here in Richmond outside. I can turn off these, these inside sensors. I, I would recommend unchecking this just so you have only the outside sensors. You can kind of see what the temperature is outside. Maybe for an example, we could go all the way up to Monet Park. Let this load, and you can kind of see the temperature there. Another interesting thing to note here is this drop down menu here that shows the different um, time ranges. So let's say, we can do a one hour average and see how this changes. It, was, oh, it doesn't really change much. Um, but if we click on one of these sensors here, let's say you run it apart. I'll, I'll make a graph of the one hour average across time. And you can kind of see the very obvious um, typical cycle that temperature is. You know, back a few days ago, what we almost did, yeah, 90 degrees, 92. And then it's been kind of cooling off since, so that's good. Anyway, so this should be a really quick overview of what you can look at. There's different sensors, um, there's little signal strength indicators, there's little indicators that show how strong the widget is doing. 100% is a really good one. 53%, maybe not so much. I want to use that sensor. I kind of I went over these different things here as well as this, just to get you familiar with the website. So step two, after you've been familiar with the Purple Air website, I want you to start thinking about what you want to do for your project using Purple Air. Um, first off, I'm asking every group to come up with a phenomenon of interest, um, or, or in other words, an interesting event um, that has happened to you or that you're curious about um, modeling. So really few obvious ones include wildfires, I'm sure we don't, like the very recent one, like the last fire. Extreme temperatures, say like a very hot summer or a very um, cold winter. Air pollution, say like a Chevron refinery um, explosion or events. And you're welcome to pick other events as well. Um, the biggest thing though is if you can pick an event that you lived through or that you've heard of, um, that would be the easiest when you go through and collect and think about modeling it. 
after you pick your phenomenon of interest, um, you are then encouraged to set constraints around your phenomenon of interest. Um, these two things are most likely linked. Constraints in this context are simply time-based, right? You want to try to pick or narrow down the certain time that this event happens. And I also, and you also want to figure out the location of where this happens. And so um, for, for this assignment, you're required to pick three different sensors and three different locations. You could narrow in to say Sonoma County and cities within Sonoma County, or you could represent you know, three very different areas, such as Rennet Park, Boston, and Tampa. Say you're trying to model like a really hot summer in 2019 or something. Or you want to compare air quality in California versus air quality in other states at around the same time. Um, so after you figure constraints and your phenomenon of interest, I want you to pick, uh, create a research question. Um, uh, for example, uh, before, during, and after the last fire, what was the air quality index for Rena Park, Santa Rosa, and Calistoga? And then maybe for comparison, what's a typical air quality index for those cities? And so you kind of get the idea. Most importantly, research questions includes the phenomenon of interest, the constraints your group chose is, um, and, and most importantly, it's framed like a question. And be sure that they built into the research question, you have at least three sensors or locations you want to study. Or I guess by your, you'll run these by your instructor um, and no group should have the exact same criteria. I don't think, but well, I guess if you want to do something very trendy about the class fire, do so, call dip soon and early. Um, or try to be creative in how you pick different cities or different places in regards to it. All right, step three. So this part, um, now that you've picked your sensors, your different interests and your different constraints, uh, I'm going to show you how to use Purple Air to download the data related to your projects. So going here, I'm going to stay in Ronit Park. Um, Again, my biggest advice is trying to find a sensor that has 100% confidence or close something close to it. Sonoma State actually has their own, so let's use Sonoma State. So I'm going to click, scroll over this button here, get this widget, click download. You should get a page like this that says sensor list download tool. Um, there's an A and B here. It looks like these are both the same. I only need one of these, so I'm just going to download the first one, uh, A. Uh, I'll click download primary. But before we do this, um, make sure you set the date to capture your phenomenon of interest. So I'm going to relate to the most recent glass fire. So uh, from August to October, I should be able to capture it. But maybe let's just go ahead and go all the way to you know yesterday. There's an average minutes time here. If you want a daily, um, daily average, which I recommend, click on 1440. Um, and then now you're ready to click download primary. So it'll take a few seconds here to download every day that's happened since uh, August 1st. Um, I definitely recommend being on a stable internet connection for this. So click save file. Not only files very big, it doesn't need that stable. Um, all right, so that is how you download data. So you're going to do this at least two more times for two other sensors. All right, step four, calculate your stats. All right, so I know everybody's probably has a different amount of Excel and Google Sheets experience, but I promise this won't be too painful. So now that you have the downloaded file, um, I'm going to show you how to take your file and import it in Google Sheets. I'm doing Google Sheets first because um, for those of you who have Microsoft Excel, it's much easier. So if I can just find, here it is. Let me pull it out here. All right, so I'm gonna go to Google Sheets. I'm just gonna start a Blank one here. I'm going to go to File, Imports, Upload, select the file, 
And I'm going to take the one uh, that I downloaded. And so this is going to be for one of the sensors. I'm going to click replace spreadsheets. Uh, leave, I can leave, I can basically leave all these alone, click import data. All right, this is all of our data from August 1st to September, or gosh, to October 10th. Um, and it has different parameters here. This is air quality, particulate matter, less than 1.0 um, micrograms. But what you're used to seeing is this 2.51. So if you're doing air quality, I would use this one. You can delete the other ones. This is just an indicator of how long the sensor has been up. You can delete this. You don't really need it. This is an indicator of the Wi-Fi strength of the this, of this sensor. You can delete that too. If you're doing a temperature-based project, keep this. Uh, I'm going to do a air quality example, so I'm going to remove it. If somehow you're doing a humidity-based project, props to you. Um, I'm going to remove it since I'm not doing one. And then this is another measure of particulate matter or air quality. Um, it's a little different scale. I'm not going to use this one. So this is my final, um, I guess, spreadsheet for uh, for my air quality at St. Helena Boys and Girls Club. All right. So as I recall, the the goal here is to calculate the stats of the data. And I was being nice and I listed the different stats that I want and also the different um, equations or formulas to do so. Um, don't be nervous. I'm not, you're not, you don't have to do any of this by hand. You're going to do all of this with Google Sheets or Microsoft Excel. Um, it should be the same formulas for either. So if I wanted an average or a mean, I would type average. Or, well, first off, those of you who aren't familiar with Excel or Sheets, these things are basically fancy calculators. If you want something to be calculated, always type an equal sign. Um, and let's say I want to figure out what one plus one is. I'll type one plus one, and it'll give me that answer. It's basically a very fast calculator. Um, built into these things is that um, Google Sheets and Excel has built-in formulas that are labeled uh, certain words. So if I wanted to do a formula for the mean or the average, I would type the word average, and then I would put a starting parentheses, and then I would set a range. And so if I wanted the average of these two, I would click on one, and then the, and then hold down shift, select the other. And then I have to close the parentheses and hit enter. And so the average of 4.96 and 4.18 is 4.57. As I'm doing this, I would also label to the left to the left of it or above it to know what, what this formula is doing. So here I'm having an average. Here um, I did the formula for the average these two. I'm going to delete this. And so if I want the average of this whole time, all I would do, I'm going to start over, is I would click on the first one and then hold shift on my keyboard, scroll all the way down, click on the last one, close the parentheses, hit enter. So the average air quality from September 1st to yesterday was 91. Um, micrograms per cubic meter. That probably doesn't mean anything to you, but you can just call that the air quality index for that time. Um, also, to clean this up, there's a decreased decimal places button. This is also found in Excel. And I would recommend just one decimal place after, after the whole number. Hopefully, all this math stuff is coming back to you, um, trying to be less scary about it as possible. So these are the five statistics I want you to calculate for each one, being mindful of the units for that one. All right, hope that wasn't too painful. Um, please reach out if you have any questions with that. All right, so if you made it this far, that's pretty good. Um, remember, you should be doing these for each 
of your three sensors. Um, ideally, you could delegate it between the three of y'all or the two of you. All right, so the model, I'm gonna do an example in Google Sheets. For those of you in Excel, I think it's even easier in Excel, so um, I think you'll be okay. So first off, I would recommend creating the data. So I'm gonna name this column time. This one is fine. And the, the dates in this format isn't very useful. So I'm gonna change it to 08, 01, 2020. And then to rep it, to make those dates occur across the entire set, um, maybe I can just back up. You click on this little black, um, not black, this button here and you drag it down. You can even double click it to make it go all the way down. Um, and since I thought those data doesn't really make sense, I'm just going to delete it. All right, looks like we're ready to graph. So I'm going to click inserts, charts. And wow, Google Sheets went ahead and did it for me. So looking at this, you can definitely see when the glass fire started um, and when it really peaks. Now I would double check and actually make um, sure that is what has actually happened or this is not a sensor error. So that again, in the theme of the course, models are helpful, but they don't always capture reality. So you're gonna have to Really put on your BS detector and figure out if oh, this is actually working or if this is capturing something that's not right. All right. And here already, Google Sheets is nice is that it did all the things I asked for in graphic format. It has a title. Maybe come up with a better title, say air quality index for say Helena um, during the last fire. Time this year is fine, but make sure you put the units. So this is these are in days each day. And then this doesn't really seem much mean much, but I'm gonna put particular matter 2.5 micrograms per meter cubed. Hold up. Here, let me get that in parentheses if that's the units. And yeah, that's your graph. So you did it. You just have to do this two more times for your other two sensors, and hopefully it shows a phenomenon of interest that you were curious about, this one being the glass fire. Of course, there's other stuff in Google Sheets to make it prettier. Um, I would play with these different things and see what you can get. Most importantly, though, make sure this one is set down to zero. Um, maybe change the color. I'll let you decide. But overall, this is actually a pretty nice graph. This is maybe nicer than the Excel one that defaults to. All right. So we did step five. Part two, preparing your flight. So I can't write, I can't make a video for this one. Um, but in this part, you and your group are writing a structured reflection containing each of these sections within um, your, your essay. And so you'll be inserting graphs um, and assessing the statistics for each of your sensors. And then you're going to reflect on whether your graph and, and how your full graph and model reflect the phenomenal interest that occurred. Also, you want to reflect as a project as a whole and how it went overall, giving feedback to me uh, and the rest of the 201 cadre. So at the end of this, I want you to submit a structured reflection that's discussed in part two. Um, let me over here, part two. This is part one. Um, so I want you to submit to your structure, your structure reflection, which is part two. The Google Sheet, my Excel Excel Sheet, containing um, all the work you've done for part one. And if you can, please put all three of your sensor data into one spreadsheet, please. Maybe the best way to do that is to make each of these a different sheet within. So if you're not familiar, we call these workbooks. And as a book, they contain sheets inside. And so you can add your data into one workbook 
here and some of here in Shocker. Um, and then lastly, you need the you'll send a message to your instructor, whether it's through email or Canvas, or if it's for me through Discord, um, answering the question, just some basic questions about how your team, how how is your team, and whether or not everybody did an equal share of the work. Um, most most importantly, this is tied to questions here about teamwork and whether everybody was you know, actively participating and delegating equal work. All right, that is everything. So if there's any questions or comments, please feel free to reach out to your instructor. Also feel free to reach out to me um, in the future. So good luck, I hope you have fun, thanks.